Hello and welcome to the Midnight Quilt Show. I have been dying to share some fun news with you. After several years, I'm expecting. It's so exciting. It's been a long time since there's been a baby in my family and finally there's gonna be one. No, no, I'm not pregnant. No, no, no. No, um, sorry, I should have been more clear. My sister-in-law is expecting I'm gonna be an aunt again with a beautiful, adorable nephew. It's been a while since our family's had a baby born and can you tell I'm just a little excited? So tonight I'm working on the gift that I'm gonna bring to the shower. So picking out a quilt pattern to make for my new nephew is not something that I take lightly, but I finally found the one I wanted to make, and it's the Animal Crackers pattern by Janice Ryan. And what I love is that it features this adorable fabric. Now it has a panel, which we'll see that in a little more detail soon, and these fun prints. Another thing that I love about the pattern is that it's twin size. It's a nice big quilt, and that's not just because I'm showing off and trying to win Best Ant Award, of course. That's because if I don't finish this before he turns five, he'll still be able to use it. I mean, come on, how many times have we started baby quilts and not been able to finish it in time, right? Surely I'm not the only one. So you can tell beautiful fabrics, such fun prints. I can't wait to get started. Ooh, let's go ahead and get going. I'm using the Z is for Zoo fabric collection, and this is the charming panel that comes with it. Isn't it cute? Oh my goodness. The sweetness overload that I'm gonna get from this quilt is just gonna be too much. But I have to start out first by cutting out my individual panels. And we're gonna start with this little monkey guy. I so badly wanna make a monkey sound. I'm not going to. Ooh, ah. And as charming as you are, sorry, I gotta cut you roughly cut out the block so that I can trim it down to the proper size. What I'm gonna do is trim this to nine and a half by 10 and a half inches. And when you're fussy cutting or trimming something like this, I wanna make sure that I'm trying to keep the center bit as centered as possible. So what I'm gonna do is kind of figure out where those lines are gonna be and then go ahead and trim it to size. What I love about the panel is that these cute little guys already have some details around it. So it looks like I've already done a little piecing even though I haven't. So it looks like I'm gonna take, not counting the selvage, about a half inch off each side. If it's not perfectly centered, I'm sure it'll be fine. He'll still love me no matter what. I can't wait to give this to her at her baby shower. I know she's gonna love it. The problem is the baby shower is tomorrow, right? Don't you love how we always wait till last minute to do those kind of things? But there's nothing like a deadline to get you going, right? I've come to think of baby quilts as the gateway drug for quilting. I mean, how many of you have started quilting because you just wanted to make a quick baby quilt? right? You always say, I can stop at just one. I don't, I can do one and then I'll quit, I promise. And there is the first little panel. Now I need to cut out the strips that are going to go around it. Now these are going to be thin strips, only about an inch and a half, and I'm going to use my ruler to make it go even faster. And what's great about this, it allows me to make multiple cuts really quickly so that I don't have to keep repositioning my ruler. And what I've done is just made sure that my fabric fits within the ruler. And I'm going to take a second to make sure that it's parallel to the lines and then line it up just like that. So they're inch and a half, so all I have to do is go to where it says inch and a half and cut. I love it when it makes it easy like this. Oh, that feels so good to get through so much so quickly. Now let's see what I have. I have all my one and a half inch strips perfectly cut out, coming apart easily with no problems or errors whatsoever. This is what happens when you talk and rotary cut at the same time. If I were doing this without talking, I'm sure they would be perfect. All right, so there are my strips, and now it's time to sew them around my panel. This monkey is so adorable, but it needs a little frame with the fabric. So the pattern says to just sew the strip on and trim it when it's done, which is great because the less measuring I have to do, the better. So what are you doing, Mr. Monkey? Oh, nothing, just hanging around. Me too. All right, step one done. I'm gonna carefully, so carefully trim that there and do the same on the bottom. Not that this is my first time at being an ant, because I'm actually the ant of, hold on, I've got to think about this, a lot of darling nieces and nephews. Oh, I got it, 10, 10 nieces and nephews, that's right. Um, I won't name them off, so in case I forgot one, you won't even know that that's what happened.
So look how cute that block is. I just need to make the rest of them. But first, I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna work through the quarter square triangle. All right, off you go. So the next block in this adorable quilt is a quarter square triangle block. And so it starts off with the regular half square triangle, which I'm gonna get cut right now. And I'm cutting two bigger squares that I'm gonna sew in half and then sew in half again. So here's our first color and then blue, baby boy blue. I've already saw a picture of his sonogram. I'm pretty sure he's gonna look a lot like me. I know some quilters like to go ahead and do all their cutting and then their piecing, but sometimes I'm just too excited to get to the block. So I kind of cut and then piece and then cut and then piece because the quicker that I cut, the quicker that I get to have my little, my little monkey friend hang out with me. See, he talks to me late at night when I'm trying to finish up these quilts. So basically what I'm gonna do, like I've done on a lot of half square triangle blocks, is I'm going to draw a line diagonally right down the center here and sew a quarter inch on each side of the line. Then when I trim it and open it up, I have a half square triangle, which just so happens to look like this. Two beautiful half square triangles, which we're gonna put together and make into a quarter square triangle. I love making half square triangles. It's actually one of the first blocks I worked with when I started to quilt. In fact, I think, I think I can show you a baby quilt I made with a half square triangle. Hold on, I'll be right back. So this is actually the first baby quilt I've ever made. I had to go searching, you know, in my treasure trove of all the important baby kid stuff that I've been saving. And I made this for my son when he was first born, which has been, well, 14 and a half years ago. And I think it's so cute because it has the little half square triangles right here that made up the star. And what I think is really fun about this is I made this before I even started machine quilting. So I've been hand quilting and decided I didn't want to try hand quilting through all this flannel, so I tied the quilt, which was kind of fun. So I have my two half square triangles, and I'm gonna put them together to make a quarter square triangle. So they're going to go right sides together, but what I'm going to do is put them right sides together so that when I peel this back, I can tell that they're opposite of each other. So I don't want two blues and two yellows on the same side. I wanna make sure that it looks kind of like a little quarter square triangle right there. So they've actually been ironed in separate directions so they kind of nest in nicely together. And that means those seams kind of hug each other. And then I'm going to turn it and then draw my line again, right down the center, and then sew a quarter inch on each side. So now I just need to cut on that line that I've just drawn. And let's see how it turned out. Look at that, a quarter square triangle. And I have not one, but two. So I'm gonna press those and get started on the next block in this quilt. One thing that I love about this quilt pattern is that there are so many different kinds of blocks. So instead of getting bored of making the same one over and over and over again, I get to switch out and do different ones. And the next one I'm gonna work on is the log cabin block. And what it does is uses these beautiful strips of colors. It's like a crayon or a color explosion right here. So lots of fun. Now the way that the pattern is written, she has you sew the strips on and then trim it off, which means I don't have to pre-cut, I can just get to the sewing. So let's do it. Ah, oh, the last strip. Not that I'm complaining, because it's completely worth it just clarifying. So there is my log cabin block. I'm loving the colors and how they're placed and just went ahead and whipped up the next colorway as well. There's two different versions of the block in this quilt. Now I'm gonna take all these blocks that I've made and put them together in one big, adorable quilt. So here are the blocks in the first row of the quilt. It has the log cabin block and several of the pieced blocks that I've already made. Now what's interesting about this quilt is that these blocks are actually rotated throughout the quilt. So I had to make sure that I really looked at the diagram to be sure that I was putting them right. And I guess if it wasn't perfect, nobody would notice anyway, right? So another thing that I love about this pattern is that some of the corners don't actually meet up. That means if my piecing isn't perfect, it's not supposed to be that way anyway. It's like a win-win, which is great for this late at night. Now I'm gonna get this pieced. But as I was putting the blocks out, I realized I only showed one of my kids' baby quilts. And since you know how kids love to accuse their parents of favoritism, I thought I better show you my girls' baby quilts as well. That way they don't think I'm playing favorites to my son. 
So my middle daughter is 12, and this is actually the quilt we made for her. It's more of a rag quilt, and this one's actually appliqued, so we cut these out. My husband actually helped me, and then I sewed them down. And you can tell I upped my machine quilting uh, skills a little bit and went from the tacking or the tying and actually used my quilting machine to quilt little details in each one of them. And what I love about this is you can tell that both of these quilts are very well loved and used. By the time my third child came around, my time was just a little bit more limited, if you get what I'm saying. So the next quilt is still adorable, but I took advantage of a panel as well, as I did on this one, to make it a little easier. So simple four patch block with a fun little panel block. But I guess that's enough time for memories. I need to get this quilt finished before it gets too late. So I've pieced all the rows in the first couple blocks, and all I need to do is sew together the rest of the quilt. So I'm all done with the center of the quilt, and all I have to do is put on the borders, make it into a quilt sandwich, and start quilting away. But I have to say, I'm loving these little animals because they're giving me constant encouragement to this whole thing. Oh, what great colors you're using. Why, thank you, April the Giraffe. I love how all your points match up, Angela. Oh, Ellie the Elephant, you're too silly. Don't you love positive encouragement? Anyway, time to get back to work. So when it comes to quilting sampler quilts, or quilts with a lot of different blocks, picking out the quilting designs can be so difficult. But usually what I like to do is just highlight one or two things about the quilt that I love, and then just quilt an all over, over the rest. It's not only easy, but it makes sense, right? Because your quilting's not necessarily gonna show anyway. So with the panel blocks, I decided to use the quilting to highlight the cute little animals that are in each of them. But the thing about doing that is that you don't have to highlight all the elements in the panel. You can pick out the thing that you want to show off. And in this one, I've outlined the little monkey, we'll call him Marvin the monkey, outlined him so he's going to stand out a little bit more, and then filled in the rest of the area with an all over design. I used a swirl, I threw in a few loops, but really any design is going to work, any filler that you want to throw in there. And you can make this as detailed and as complex as you want it to be, or as basic. So I could have went around his eyes, around his stomach, but I kind of got to get this thing done, so I just went around the outside and filled in the rest of the block. Now in the rest of the quilt, I have just did a big loopy all over. I love how it has the, the roundness and the fun bubbles, but really it's going to help keep that quilt nice and soft. I don't want to quilt it too much because I want the baby baby bell to wrap up in it and, and have fun. So this nice big loopy all over, over the rest of the quilt. And what's nice about that is if the piecing isn't perfect, it's going to help hide that and just give it a nice all over texture. Now I did change it up just a bit. When I got to this print here that has the cute little animals, I decided to quilt around each of those little circles just to highlight them. I think I just did it because I was bored. You can do whatever you like on your quilt. If that seems like too much to remember, don't worry. I have free downloadable quilting diagrams for you so that you can see exactly what I've done in areas of this quilt. All you have to do is check out the description box and it'll tell you where you can get those. So this number one ant is finally finished with my new nephew's quilt and I can't wait to give it to him when he arrives. I got to work with fun panels and quarter square triangles in an array of beautiful colors. I used the quilting to highlight the areas that I wanted to show off and just resorted to an all over to get the quilt finished. And you can always tell it's been a productive night when I'm covered with thread and lint. But now it's getting late and I need to get this packed up for the baby shower tomorrow. Now be sure to subscribe so that you can see what quilts we're making and leave comments in the comment section because I love to see what you think of the episodes. Well, until then, happy quilting.